Chapter Four of A Christmas When the West Was Young by Cyrus Townsend Brady. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Four God and the Baby. It was Christmas Eve, and they had planned to hang up the baby's stocking. How that thought had beat into the brain of the woman! There had been something to occupy her during the hours of the afternoon in which she was alone. There were certain duties that had to be attended to if one turned from food from drink from sleep there were others dependent that had to be fed the livestock accumulated during the spring and summer had to be cared for she found strange comfort in the presence of the cattle especially the milk cow and the young calf the sight of them filled her with a strange sort of envy at that picture of mere animal motherhood they presented there were household duties within the cabin as well as without the duties within were harder to discharge than those in the open had been indeed if she had consulted her own inclination she would not have re-entered the house at all empty though it was it was filled with associations of the baby that was gone and yet without or within she could no more escape from those associations than she could flee from the presence of god the presence of god was there oh was there a god she had never doubted before but the question would rise to her lips though she gave it no utterance then she forced herself to go within there was the baby's cradle in which he had lain warm for so many nights and cold for one the same hand that had reared the cabin had shaped the quaint old-fashioned little bed for the child she remembered how she had watched him do it in those hours of expectation before her birth agonies came on tears had filled her eyes as she watched him gravely but with great happiness in her soul and tears filled her eyes now with a sadness as correspondingly great she was not a demonstrative woman she clenched her teeth flung the thought back she forced herself to go to the little cradle and smooth out the bedding so soft so sweet so clean so fresh where he had lain so warm and once so cold a character less stern less self-controlled less absolutely restrained would have put that cradle out of sight but not she they had laid the little body away in the ground but somehow it was not there there was a god surely and he and the baby were in the room the sun went down in a blaze of glory out of sympathy at first she thought with her mood but on second thoughts perhaps it was not the glory of this world that was indicated by that shining orb the shadows lengthened dusky twilight stole over the fields before the hill the darkness presently rolled like a wave over the vast expanse of the prairie she lighted the lamp she went over to the set of shelves pulled aside the curtains white for white was the color for babies and angels and looked again upon the little garments that she had made she choked down a dry sob with eyes blinded she reached her hand within and drew forth one of his little knitted stockings she took it to the fireplace she hung the stocking over a nail in the broad half-log that formed the mantel shelf for this hour they had brought with them from the east trinkets saved by loving hands from their boyhood and girlhood days trifles but heavy with love these she thrust into the stocking and a little knitted covering hung bulging in the light cast by the fire and the lamp it was christmas eve and she had hung up the baby's stocking that was the room in which they slept from her lonely bed she watched it hanging there through the long night the ever-diminishing light cast by the dying fire showed her the faint outlines until toward the very early morning then it completely died away and left the room in darkness she could not sleep she did not want to sleep she had not prayed there had seemed to her nothing left to pray for and had it not been for the baby's little face that sometimes came smiling to her out of the night she would have doubted if there were a being to whom to pray toward morning she left her bed wrapped the shawl around her shoulders and barefooted clad only in her nightgown she went to the door she opened it and stared without 
the night was far spent the day was at hand a faint greyness bordered the eastern horizon low before her blazing in the translucent pearl of the cold sky was the great star of morning it was christmas day so had a star blazed over bethlehem before wondering eyes centuries before shepherds in the fields had noticed it wise men from the east had followed it kings on their thrones had inquired about it there was no mention of it in holy writ but surely women too had marked it at least it seems so to her perhaps by the grace of god had come to suffering women who as she stared at it some faint instinctive premonition that the star blazed for them and that he who was presently to be born was to be more than all the rest of the world to mothers oh if he had been for mothers why had he taken her baby from where she stood by turning her head she could see the little mound but she would not look that way she kept her eyes fixed ever on the star as she watched clouds came christmas was to be a grey day after all it was so still as still as it must have been before the angel choir of the past broke the silence of the judean hills with its heavenly music presently with the softly spreading clouds the wind came she was suddenly conscious that she was cold she shivered a little as she stood by the open door watching so mary might have watched before that christmas morning the star whose meaning even she so dimly knew the woman at last went into the house and stopped by the empty cradle a moment she kissed the stocking hanging before the fireplace merry christmas she whispered softly and sadly sending her message to her baby out into the infinite confident that he would hear presently she dressed herself rekindled the fire and went about her daily tasks thanking god that she had these tasks to do and wishing that they were harder and that the demand upon her was greater if it had not been for the baby and god she had decided at last that he was there she would have died with the loneliness after everything was done and there was nothing more to occupy body and mind she went outside wrapped in the old shawl sat down on the bench and stared across the prairie in the direction whence her husband must come she could see nothing of him of course it was too early for him yet she waited and watched until she could bear it no longer she turned and went across the hill to the little mound at the edge of the trees she had buried her baby where the sunlight could fall upon him not in the shadow she knelt down over the little grave and put her face in her hands that was not enough she stretched out her arms and fell gently forward and embraced the small mound of earth with her arms she laid her cheek against it it was so cold and he must be cold she could warm them both perhaps what strange madness possessed her thoughts as she clasped the place where he lay she had eaten nothing but the awful soul hunger that filled her being could not be satisfied with earthly food the pain in her full undrawn breasts which otherwise had distressed her almost beyond endurance was forgot because of the greater pain in her heart it was christmas day the day on which to the sons of men and the daughters of women a son had been born a child had been given but not to her she was alone something cold fell upon her cheek she opened her eyes she rose to her knees and looked about her the air was filled with whirling sudden snow she got to her feet and went back to the door and stared over the prairie she could scarcely see even as far as the foot of the hill all the earth was covered the sky and the air were filled with white then and not until then did she forget the baby the man so brave strong true tender the baby's father was out there in the snow god help him there was no hesitation this time standing there already white with the crystals of the sky she stretched out her arms and prayed and prayed and prayed for the first time that day the living took the first place in her heart End of chapter 4